Grace and peace be unto you. Grace, mercy, and peace. What a time we are in. But God is so awesome. He's working miracles. There are so many testimonies that are coming out of this whole uh, pandemic uh, season that we're in. But uh, please be encouraged. The Lord is working on your behalf. Come on, the angels are released. There are so many miracles of food, of uh, people receiving uh, gifts, God showing up in miraculous ways. Ministries that have been planted years ago are coming to the fore. Uh, there are so many things that are coming out of this experience. So there are disadvantages. Yes, there are advantages in every crisis. God shows up. And so we have been tracking the end times. We have been looking at the eschatology. So the study of the end times is called eschatology. It means that you look at hell, you look at heaven, you look at the earth, you look at all of the things that have been prophesied from all of the prophets from the Old Testament, how they came to pass in the New Testament. Remember, we were not there in first century and now we have the history we were not there in second century here we are in the 21st century and so every time there's a crisis there is going to be a post era so they went into slavery you had a post slavery era they went into all kinds of trouble the children of Israel uh, it was a bunch that will complain for everything and anything but there was always a post era so there was a pre era in the pre-era, God would send prophets like Isaiah. He will send prophets like Jeremiah. And then when they got into captivity, they didn't listen to Jeremiah. Oh no, they didn't listen to Isaiah. So now Daniel, when they're in captivity, begins to tell them that God is releasing them. So here comes a post-era. Ah, Nehemiah comes and he builds back with Ezra and brings them out. So there's always a post-era. And you know that we're in a post-Calvary. Hallelujah. So when you look Look at the entire globe. You had a post World War One. You had a post World War Two. Now we are preparing for a post pandemic era. Things are going to change. Change is inevitable. And so because of the change, we must continue to pray as the church. There is so much that is going to change and shift. And so we must be prepared. We are in the powerful text of uh, chapter eight. Before we get to chapter eight, we want to touch the last two verses of chapter 7 and we want to look at verses 16 and 17 verses 16 says and they referring to the nations that have been redeemed from the planet now they are in the heavenlies now they're before the throne now they're in worship so the text says they shall hunger no more could you imagine that so uh, Paul says the light afflictions is just but for a moment Paul declares listen the sufferings of this present moment are not going to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed so there's excitement to come so we are now in a pre oh yes pandemic but there's a post coming oh, Oh, hallelujah and you know how the post works the post when the post era comes ah uh, you begin to now look back at deficits you now begin to look back at who's not there you now begin to look back at why God did what he did oh yes why God sent David at the time he sent him so there was always a pre era and there's always going to be preparation for a post era and so the wise are going to understand Daniel says in the times that we are going to experience come on knowledge is going to be on the increase Things are going to move at a rapid pace but those who are experiencing the pre-era and God has spared you for the uh, the post era so the pre-era are uh, you are able to look you're able to look back on the stern of history and you're able to now hold hallelujah the truth of what really happened to Israel you're able to look at the crisis of Noah's day so Jesus said now as in the days of Noah were so shall we begin to see a pre-era and a post era so we need to now prepare for the post era things are going to shift in the church things are going to shift across the five pillars of society things are going to shift across the five hallelujah pillars that we are praying into these pillars marriage the family the government the church education these five pillars hold our society up every other uh, office comes under those purviews and so it's important to understand that they shall hunger no more and neither shall they thirst anymore just yesterday uh, the farmers in the US 
they had to kill 61,000 chickens because the eggs are not being delivered. There is no demand. So there's a demand and a supply chain. So you must understand that even in the natural realm, there is a demand that is not there. There's a supply that is backing up. And so we need to push that now into the realm of the spirit. That's a powerful window. So if you press in, like the woman with the issue of blood, like the Syrophoenician woman, these women pressed in. They had a demand on the anointing. They put a demand on Christ like the centurion. They, these people were operating outside of covenant reach. They were operating outside of the norm. And so there are some times when you get into a post era, or you have to operate outside of certain parameters to get what God needs. Hallelujah. To be released in your life. And so the lamb, verse 17 says, the lamb, oh yes, which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. And notice uh, the right to hear in the first few chapters is referring to the lamb. He's referring to the lamb because the lamb the moment he was born, the reason why the shepherds came to inspect the lamb or the baby is because the moment he was birthed, he was doomed for sacrifice. But now the lamb has overcome. So we are living now in a post hallelujah, Calvary era post resurrection era. We are living in so many eras that have taken the blows, the hit so many church fathers that have come through the 2nd century, 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century. By the time you get to the 6th century, hallelujah, all the reformers and everything that would happen there with the Calvins and the Martin Luthers ah, shaped our era. Now we have come to the 19th, the 20th century and we are pressing in for a post-COVID uh, era. In that post-COVID era, come on, don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. You need to be prepared. We have history that backs us up of what would take place in hallelujah post era just as Nehemiah they needed a Zachariah to come they needed a prophet Haggai oh yes they needed oh yes the governors to come Zerubbabel they needed the might and the power and that's why God released that powerful prophetic word to Zachariah not by might not by power but by my spirit said the Lord God so in a post era we need the kind hallelujah of might mindset. We need the kind of fortitude. We need capacity. We need believers that will stand and understand the Lamb, come on, has overcome. And we are dealing with an era like no other era before this or after this. And so the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, He's going to feed them. So there's no hunger there. Hallelujah. And He shall lead them. Hallelujah. And He's going to do it unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all. Hallelujah. Tears from their eyes. Come on, this is worth the waiting. Come on, this is worth the worship. This is worth the press. This is worth the time. Come on, what you're dealing with right now cannot be compared with what we have just read there. Ah, there's going to be tears among this group. But God shall wipe away all of their tears. Oh yes, because now they remember. Hallelujah. Now this is not the church group. This is the nations of the earth. The church is a selected group that have been taken out. The ecclesia. The ecclesia has no need to cry. The ecclesia has no need. We are going to be like the angels. But this group. Hallelujah. This is a group that have gone through a crushing. Gone through the pressures. Now he is going to wipe their crying. They are weeping because if they had only known in the pre-era of the gospel. Oh, come on. Sometimes you get into a pre-era where some people said, I don't want to hear about Christ. I don't want to hear anything about Jesus. I don't want to hear the gospels. The church is just full of hypocrites. Ah, there's a pre-era but when it comes to the post-era all the regrets that are going to be there. Some people are gambling right now. They're wagering everything but it's a losing battle if you do not have Christ. Oh, come on. You need the lamb. The lamb has has overcome. He is the first fruit. He is the first begotten. He tasted death and he's alive and because he's alive we need to follow the lamb. We need to understand that these are critical days. So we are about to experience a post era. In that whole experience it's going to change. Oh yes the platforms. It's going to change. Yes the horizon is going to change. The belief system is going to change. Those who are in and those who are out. Those who are saints and those who are ain'ts. Those who are for and those who are against it. It's going to be a powerful, powerful post era. What we, we, we need, we need now to see what the word of God is releasing in chapter number eight. Come on, this is exciting. Chapter number eight says, verse one. 
this says in such a powerful opening it says and when he had opened the seventh seal so this is seal number seven so we have tracked through one two three four horsemen five six now here we are at seven he said i saw the seventh angel which stood before god and to them were given seven trumpets so the seventh seal is opening up the preparation for the angels to sound so this is a pre-era and the post we are going to see what the post so there is a preparation each angel is given a trumpet these trumpets are designed uh, from the ram's horn so you could imagine in the days of Joshua bringing down Jericho in the days of Moses and the children of Israel in the days of the worship and the Levites the ram's horn Horn was used and so there are ram's horns that are going to be used hallelujah in the heavenlies you could imagine the might and the power of the angelic hosts hallelujah and they were given seven seven trumpets so it's important to understand that God is perfecting praise he's perfecting the angelic host he's perfecting all things so there are seven churches seven trumpets seven angels and there are seven hallelujah distinct features of Christ so everything is handling uh, in the, the the number or they would call it the numerology of seven so when we come to number six it speaks of man we were created on the sixth day and because we were created on the sixth day we were cut short from seven God knew in his wisdom that Adam would have eaten from that fruit so he created us on the sixth day and allowed us now to be able to push for the seventh day the seventh day means that this is a perfection bliss so John was standing in the spirit on the Lord's day but behind him in day number six he heard a voice that said don't go to seven come back so when John returned this is what he saw he saw that there are seven angels seven trumpets oh come on seven bowls of wrath he saw there are seven church ages now we are in number seven I decree and declare that we are in a pre-era and the post is about to come but now God in his mercy has given us the ability to prepare for the post era in this post era hallelujah the angelic host is going to come into full activation come on the Holy Ghost that's why he came so early at the day of Pentecost so that he could prepare for the 21st century he was able to track every development he was able to track everyone that will come to the fore oh come on you are privileged we are privileged to be a part of the post era that is coming so there are many people who would not be able to access the post era there are many people who are not able to understand the levels so Daniel says some that are not wise would not comprehend but the wise will understand and then the people who do know their God come on you are going to be strong and you're going to do exploit hallelujah so in this powerful post era that we are about to prepare for uh, another angel in verse number three came and stood at the altar so the blueprint everything that we're dealing with in the earth realm there's a blueprint in heaven so if there's an altar in heaven God said to Moses I want you to build it just like the pattern you see so God has the blueprint the original altar is in heaven so God anointed Moses and anointed Bezaleel to come and to build after the pattern so everything that we are dealing with even your body our Paul says if this earthly house be dissolved at any time we have another building with God so he holds the blueprint we are just animated in this there's an anointing that he has placed within you to move through the earth realm the enemy doesn't want you to succeed to have what the word says you're gonna have but you hallelujah you are anointed come on you have this in this earthen vessel Paul says you have this treasure that the excellency be not of you but God now has put this treasure in earthen vessels that we seek after the excellency we press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling hallelujah so there is an advancement come on you are progressing there is hallelujah a de demarcation you are not the same as you used to be the entire globe is not the same hallelujah even if the air quality is improving even if the carbon deposits are lowing yet now you have to deal with the hearts of men and you know people are people some people just are going to be the same old same old some people are not going to shift hallelujah their philosophy their understanding
understanding, their thinking patterns, they're going to still do the crazy stuff. But the people who do know their God, oh come on, you're going to be so strong in this period. You have been prepared, you have been prepped for a post hallelujah pandemic era. It's going to be something else. Come on, the just now is going to live by faith. Oh, you talk about faith, you're going to have to now push faith because everyone is going to be tested. Everyone, hallelujah, every airport, every entry, every exit, everything is going to be tested. Everything is going to be sampled. We are going to be looking something like guinea pigs, but the just now is going to live by faith. You talk about the blood, I, everyone is going to know about the blood. That's how the gospel of the kingdom is going to be packaged and released. And so we never thought, hallelujah, virus will give an opening to the gospel of the kingdom, whereby everyone would want to know how are you surviving? How are you getting over this? Hallelujah. We is not by mind Zachariah. Come on, not by but by the Spirit, said the Lord God. So now before the altar, having a golden censer. So the censer uh, deals with the incense. The incense is uh, compounded. The incense is mixed. The altar is prepared for worship. This is not the brazen altar, but this is the altar just before the veil. So Jesus became the veil. He became the censer. He became the altar. Jesus became the chandelabra. He became the showbread. And he became the curtains. He became uh, the embroidery of gold and the embroidery of blue. He became all the patterns. So he's our pattern. He became the door. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man could access the Shekinah, the glory, the Godhead, but by me. No one could come to the Father but by me. So he became the basin, uh, the lava. He became the showbread. He became the chandelabra. He became everything that you see moving here in the tabernacle. So the golden altar is there. Hallelujah. And much incense. Hallelujah. That should be offered. This is the prayers of all the saints. Hence the reason he is the chief intercessor. He ever liveth to make intercession. Oh, come on, he's there. An intercessor stands between. So whatever the virus is doing, hallelujah, the intercessor stands between. The altar of incense is prepared. Our duty now is to pack that altar. Our duty now is to heave up our praise. Come on, somebody worship him and bless him. Our duty, our requirement is to be in prayer. Men are always to pray with all kinds of prayers for all the saints. Oh, come on, Paul told Timothy, he said, now I'm telling you, Timothy, my boy, you've got to pray. You've got to supplicate. You've got to intercede for all men, for kings. Hallelujah. He said, I'm telling you, you've got to pray. And the moment you pray here, we begin to see, hallelujah, they are given much incense. That it should be offered with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. Hallelujah. So in the earth realm, there's the Ark of the Covenant. But in the heavenly realm, the throne hallelujah the occupier the one who occupies the throne and the one who is seated in the throne so the lamb is seated in the throne and the ancient of days is right there come on the four beasts are there the four and twenty elders are there and here comes the angel hallelujah and could you imagine that the prayers of the saints are right before where the curtain should be oh come on the middle wall has been divided oh yes the curtain was rent in two from the top to the bottom so now you have access. Come on, this is a pre-preparation for a post, hallelujah, world that we're about to experience. We never taught that one little virus could usher us into a pre-preparation for a post pandemic world. It's not going to be ordinary. It's not going to be simple. Matthew 24 says, these are the things that are going to come. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning of sorrows. Now you begin to prepare for the middle. So there's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an omega. So there's an alpha, there's a middle, there is an omega. So the book now prepares us to keep praying. So this is encouraging the saints of God. This is encouraging every intercessor, every prayer warrior. Keep praying. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything hinder you. Hallelujah. And so the, the prayers of the saints, which are before the throne, verse number four says, and the smoke, the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, they repeated again, ascended up, hallelujah, before God, out of the angel's hands. So could you imagine your prayers are shifting the globe right now. Your prayers are shaping the outcome. Your prayers as we join together in a corporate release. This is a corporate release. 
This is not a, uh, any one individual. This is a corporate release. No one could say, hey, I did it. No, no, no. This is together we are praying. The altar is in need of the prayers of the saints. Notice that the saints are mentioned here. Angels are all around the throne. You talk about thousands, times ten thousands, and thousands of thousands. Yet the prayers of the saints take center stage right before the throne. Come on, in the, the midst of the action, in the right there in the epicenter of power, right there in the majesty. Come on, glorify him, worship him, bless him. So you need to prepare so that your prayers could ascend. Hallelujah. And these are not prayers from the saints just on the earth realm, but those that are in the heavenlies combined. This is a combination of pre and this is a combination of post. So when you combine this, hallelujah, you begin to see that the smoke is rising and hallelujah, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Hallelujah. And the angel, hallelujah, took the censer, filled it now with fire from the altar and cast it into the earth. Hallelujah. And there were voices and thundering and lightning and earthquake. So the effect of the heavenlies in this powerful text is very, very powerful to note that whatever is happening in heaven can affect the earth realm. And whatever we have been schooled in in the earth realm can affect the heavenlies. So there are diabolical measures that people have been schooled in in the earth realm trying to influence the heavenlies just as the moon. Remember the moon does not carry its own light. The moon is lit from the sunlight. But because the moon is so close, the gravitational influence, the pull of the moon influences ah, the tide, influences the, the, the fields, influences the months, influences the weeks and the days. So could you imagine you an influence right where you are? You have a gravitational pull. Your prayers, oh come on, your prayers are ascending. Your prayers are making an indentation. Come on, someone is listening right now. Your prayers are making impact and you think it's not making impact. I'm just encouraging you right now. There's not much we can do but pray. Hallelujah. We can pray but we know that when you pray, the effectual come on the fervent James says it does much avail it does much the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man does much avail he said hey look at Elijah man of like passion just like you he prayed and the heavens were influenced for three years and a half and then he had to pray again hallelujah for the heavens to be open and so Jesus came he said listen when you are praying he said you got to ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find I knock and it shall be open. So now we are in this era where there is a post world coming. In that post world, come on, don't be caught flat footed. Don't be caught, hallelujah, with your hands tied. Don't be caught, hallelujah, in a daze. Don't be wondering what happened. Come on, you have got to create the happening. You have got to create the push. You have got to create the stirring. And so I decree and declare to you today that God has given you, hallelujah, such a timeline so that now you can prepare. We have never seen a preparation like this we have never seen a time like this where you can prepare you can plan what you are going to release in the next couple of months hallelujah you can plan for 2021 because 2020 hallelujah has all been cancelled everything has been cancelled in the economic systems in the agricultural system there's a troublesome time in that field come on in the military system the plans for everything that was should have rolled out in 2020 all the gadgets and everything that that was rolling out from Korea, from Japan, from China. Oh yes, everything is on just a lockdown. Uh, back to the drawing board back to the drawing board so God has put us back to the drawing board so things that should have rolled out by summer things that have should have rolled out by fall whether it be clothing cosmetics literature everything is on hold so could you imagine the phenomenal minds are thinking our leadership thinking everyone is planning now vision becomes to take on a new dimension think about the mission that is about to roll out think about hallelujah the things that are coming our destinies are taking on a new dimension 
mentioned. Think about the students that should have been in the exam room. Think about, hallelujah, the children that need to be shifted from one level to the next. Fifth form, fourth form, second form, third form, all of the shifts from primary school, from preschool, everything has been topsy-turvy. So now we are called upon, come on, to fill the altar with prayer. God knows the outcome. He knows exactly what he is doing. But you need the mind of Christ. According to Paul writing to the church at Philippi, let this mind be in you so that you need to understand that this is, hallelujah, a pre-arrangement for a post-world that is coming. Every time you pray, pray into a post-world that God will give you wisdom, might, understanding. He will give you the grace to carry through. Come on, I pray right now for all the headship gifts. Fathers, oh yes, leaders, yes, I pray for her excellency, the president, the prime minister. I pray for the opposition leader. I pray for the chief justice and the chief secretary. All the offices under their purview so that now they begin to plan for a post, yes, COVID world that we have to deal with. We pray for the health of our leaders. We pray, my God, that you're going to touch them. You're going to surround them. You're going to keep every infection off our courses. We pray even now that the atmosphere, the environment, the climate over Trinidad, Tobago is covered by the blood of the Lamb. We pray that as we prepare for this post world that you'll give us wisdom, you'll give us prudence, you'll give us understanding, you'll give us direction from your word. The Lord bless you today. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance over you and give you shalom in Jesus name. Don't you dare panic. Join me here every uh, Sunday at 8.30 for this awesome broadcast. Don't forget the reruns. And so you need to understand how things in the heavenlies are shaping and influencing. The courts of heaven are ruling on this. And so we need to be on the Lord's side. We need to be in prayer. We need to intercede just as Abraham had to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. We need to stand in the gap for our loved ones, for our ministries, for pastors, for leaders all around the globe headship gifts those who are strategizing those who are planning they need our prayers and so in the heavenlies we see how the altar the angel the prayers affect the earth realm and so right now the earth is being affected by this pandemic so heaven is going to respond there's going to be lightning thunder and earthquake the Lord bless you indeed in Jesus name amen